And three, two, one. We are live. What's up, everyone? Happy Friday. We made it. We made it to the end of the week. And we have a special guest with us today that's going to be helping us out. And that's Sophie. All right. So, round of applause for Sophie. Those would have the soundboard going. All right. So, I'm going to share my screen right now. Don't mind me. I got like a million tabs open. And boom. All right. So, here we go. So, first comes first, subscribe to the channel. All right. Give that subscribe. We're trying to get. And I've said this before, we're trying to, once we get to a thousand, then we can start making money. And then for every video that's watched, it will be money for you guys because we'll put it into the athletics and the PE program. So, boom. All right. So, Sophie, this would you rather question I'm going to ask you first. But also, um, so guys that are watching this, grab your phones, send an email out to me this time. It's Coach Chavez is with us. So, do the would you rather question and also, but more importantly, think about the projects. Think like, do I have any questions about the project? Is there anything? And there's no such thing as a stupid question. Just ask whatever you think, you know, you might have a question on and send me that email. And also the would you rather. So, Sophie, would you rather see fireworks or go to a concert, assuming there's no COVID? I think go to a concert. Mm, nice. What type of music? Um, well, there's this artist that I really like. His name is uh, Cristian Castro. Mm. Um, and yeah, and I mean, I would get to see fireworks every 4th of July. So I'm basically not really missing right. out, you could say. Yeah, that makes sense. You're like fireworks, you know, I've seen that a bunch of times. But yeah, concert, that's a little something a little more special. All right, so I'm looking out for those emails, guys. Maybe I'll have to check again later because I'm not getting any, maybe because of the lag time. All right, well, we're gonna keep pressing onward. All right, Let's see if this link works with Zoom. Boom, look at that. So this is, the rubric that I'm going to send to you guys and we'll give you guys like over a week to complete this. Um, so I'll send this out, check on your Google classrooms after the class and this you can use to just kind of, you know, see how exactly to do the brochure because you've seen it through the videos, but this is kind of written out of like what you need and it has the websites on there. Um, and it also explains to like, you know, this is what the brochure looks like because when it's on paper, it's a little different. Um, and then lastly, it just has this, which is like what you'll be graded on. So based on like how you do, you know, if you have, you know, less, it just like it has that just if you want to read through it after you finish it to just to make sure like this has a checklist. Okay, like, I got all my foods in there. I ex explained everything well. It's like artistic. All right, so that's something to look at. Um, let me go back to the presentation. All right. So this is just a recap too on the project. Um, oh, I got a bunch of responses. Let's read those out. Isabel Lopez, I would rather go see fireworks. Andrew Garcia, I'd go watch fireworks because I have no friends. That's, I'm sure that's not true, Andrew. <laughs> Natalie Hernandez, I would choose to see fireworks, awesome. Caitlin, I would go to a concert because they are fun and exciting, I like that. Humberto, there'd be a step-by-step, oh, okay. He asked a question about the brochure, will there be a step-by-step for the brochure yes there will be and i'll be putting that out on the google classroom so good question andrew says i would rather see fireworks because the smell of gunpowder is weird but has memories of fourth of july at the same time yeah that is do you like do you have an image when you think of um or like can you think of the smell of gunpowder 
Sophie? Can you like picture the, or not picture, like kind of like smell gunpowder if you think of it? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, can you like think of like, oh, I know what that smells like. It's a strong smell. I don't, I don't know. I don't usually pay attention to those because like we're far away, right? So. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I do like after fireworks, after they go off, like that's such a strong smell. Um, but yeah. See, and then Armando says seeing fireworks, because in my opinion, fireworks are more calming than being just loud. Interesting. I like that. Nice, Armando. All right. So uh, my project here. See, so this is the title page. You got your name. You'd have your homeroom on there. Then some artwork. Slide two. Um, I was able to slide in like all of them. But so I just put the text over the image and that's something that you can do. Um, and if you run into a problem like this one, it was kind of like, see how the vegetables are kind of yellow in the background. I like the font was not gonna go through. So what I did was I clicked, first I clicked the, the image. So I clicked the vegetable image and then I clicked this little guy. So, no, this guy, actually, sorry, transparency. So you click transparency. So it makes, so if, at first it was like this, and I'm like, oh, you can barely see that. So I just scrolled until I was like, all right, you can kind of see the image and you can also see the text. All right, so that's transparency and that's right here. All right, so you got the sugar intake, interesting facts. And see how there's like a, a picture and then a description. Um, and then binge eating disorder. I, I went kind of above and beyond. You don't need to do all that. But there's, see how there's like pictures with the slides. And I tried to make like the font a little bit different. So, all right. So that's that for the project, guys. And I'll post those, um, I'll post that rubric up there so you'll know exactly what you need to do. And don't worry about it. You can message me if you need any help with anything. And uh, we can get on office hours if you need help, like figuring out how to do different things. So don't stress about it. All right. So how to send your project. So when you're done, so this is important. Just like think about this. Oops. When you're done, you're going to send an email. I'm going to get my email out right now. And this is what you're going to do. So you go to your Gmail. Gotta load for a second. You're gonna compose. All right, so you're gonna send it to me if you're in fifth and sixth grade, and then you're gonna title it your name. So this was Sophie, she would write Sophie Cruz, and then brochure project and then all you would need to write is like hi coach bot this is my project i am in and what's your homeroom again sophie lmu lmu repping it for lmu um and then you just would link the project so you'd go over to your project Go over to your project and then you copy this guy and just paste him in there and then send it over to me all right so you got see how i wrote her name so you wrote write your name and then bro search your project and then just include in there your homeroom boom all right so we're gonna keep moving here so that's the project now we're gonna move on to, we're just gonna like finish with a little bit of um, eating disorders. And this is a story of a runner. Um, and when I was in college, I really looked up to her because she was like the fastest girl that was like in America. She was like breaking all these American records. She was in high school, like breaking records. Uh, she's like close to my age. And then she got signed 
to Alberto Salazar, who is a very, uh, like one of the most like well-known distance running coaches of all time. And uh, I, yeah, so this uh, is an interesting story to me. And uh, fun fact on the left over here, this is BU's track. So this is Boston University over in the Northeast. Um, both both uh, Coach Chavez and I have raced here. It's a great track. It's banked. So that means it curves. There's like a little curve to it. So you'll like run on the bank and then run off it. Like it's not like some tracks are flat. This one you like come up and then roll down. All right. So about to play Mary Kane's story and then we're just going to ask if you want to share your reaction to to this story, just send out an email. All right. And this is it. Walmart. I was the fastest girl in America. I set many national records, and I was a straight A student. When I was 16, I got a call from Alberto Salazar at Nike. He was the world's most famous track coach, and he told me I was the most talented athlete he'd ever seen. During my freshman year in college, I moved out to train with him and his team full-time at Nike World Headquarters. It was a team of the fastest athletes in the world, and it was a dream come true. I joined Nike because I wanted to be the best female athlete ever. Instead, I was emotionally and physically abused by a system designed by Alberto and endorsed by Nike. This is what happened to me. When I first arrived, an all-male Nike staff became convinced that in order for me to get better, I had to become thinner and thinner and thinner. This Nike team was the top running program in the country. And yet we had no certified sports psychologist. There was no certified nutritionist. It was really just a bunch of people who were Alberto's friends. So when I went to anybody for help, they would always just tell me the same thing. And that was to listen to Alberto. Alberto was constantly trying to get me to lose weight. He created an arbitrary number of 114 pounds and he would usually weigh me in front of my teammates and publicly shame me if I wasn't hitting weight. He wanted to give me birth control pills and diuretics to lose weight, the latter of which isn't allowed in track and field. I ran terrible during this time, but reached a point where I was on the starting line and I'd lost the race before I started because in my head, all I was thinking of was not the time I was trying to hit the number on the scale I saw earlier that day. It would be naive to not acknowledge the fact that weight is important in sports. It's like boxers need to maintain a certain weight or, you know, everybody always ends up citing the math about how the thinner you are, the faster you're gonna run because you have to carry less weight. But here's a biology lesson I learned the hard way. When young women are forced to push themselves beyond what they're capable at their given age, they're at risk for developing REDS. Suddenly you realize you've lost your period for a couple months and then a couple months becomes a couple of years. And in my case, it was a total of three. And if you're not getting your period, you're not going to be able to have the necessary levels of estrogen to maintain strong bone health. And in my case, I broke five different bones. The New York Times Magazine published a story about how Alberta was training me and nurturing my talent. We weren't doing any of that. I felt so scared, I felt so alone, and I felt so trapped. And I started to have suicidal thoughts. Um, I started to cut myself. Some people saw me cutting myself. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, um, 
nobody really did anything or said anything. Um, so in 2015, I ran this race and I, I didn't run super well. And afterwards, there was a thunderstorm going on. Half the track was under one tent. Um, Alberta yelled at me in front of everybody else at the meet. And he told me that I clearly gained five pounds before the race. Um, it was also that night that I told Alberto and our sports psych that I was cutting myself and they pretty much told me they just wanted to go to bed. And I think for me, that was my kick in the head where I was like, this system is sick. I think even for my parents in certain ways, once I finally vocalized to them, I mean, they were horrified. They bought me the first plane ride home. And they were like, get on that flight, get the hell out of there. I wasn't even trying to make the Olympics anymore. I was just trying to survive. So I made the painful choice and I quit the team. After a multi-year investigation, the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency has banned Alberto Salazar from the sport for four years. Nike will shut down the Oregon Project. Nike CEO Mark Parker stepping down from the company in January of 2020. Those reforms are mostly a direct result of the doping scandal. They're not acknowledging the fact that there's a systemic crisis in women's sports and at Nike, in which young girls' bodies are being ruined by an emotionally and physically abusive system. That's what needs to change, and here's how we can do it. First, Nike needs to change. In track and field, Nike is all powerful. They control the top coaches, athletes, races, even the governing body. You can't just fire a coach and eliminate a program and pretend the problem is solved. My worry is that Nike's merely gonna rebrand the old program and put Alberto's old assistant coaches in charge. Secondly, we need more women in power. Part of me wonders if I had worked with more female psychologists, nutritionists, and even coaches where I'd be today. I got caught in a system designed by and for men, which destroys the bodies of young girls. Rather than force young girls to fend for themselves, we have to protect them. I genuinely do have hope for the sport and I plan to be running for many years to come. And so part of the reason I'm doing this now is I want to end this chapter and I want to start a new one. Oops, All right. All right, so I know there was a lot. Let me just minimize. Let me get back to Zoom. Here we go. Okay. I know there was a lot in that um, and a lot of different things went on, but after watching that, Sophie, what were some of your uh, reactions? Well, like like I told you before, right? I watched I watched it, right? Um, mm -hmm. Already once, but like it's the fact that she lost her period for three years and like she broke all those bones and she was having suicidal thoughts like that that really shows how hard and how how hard they were pushing her and like that's that's not okay right because like you have to you can't push yourself that hard because then you could like hurt yourself like she did and definitely what she said i i really agreed with her like having more female um yeah, I the word. power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because like girls understand girls, right? And like it's not like you could, because like guys and girls, like our bodies are not the same. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think you touched on like some really good points there because, um, right, Alberto Salazar is a man. So he, like, there's one thing about reducing calories, which is different for with women as is for men. So if a woman is unable to get her period, it's going to lead to her breaking bones. Whereas, you know, men don't have to deal with periods. So it's something that might not cross Alberto Salazar's mind, which is, and so you have brought up a great point of like, yeah, we do need more women in power just because of the sheer fact is, you know, women understand women's bodies better than a man is going to understand a woman's body because we, we don't experience the same things. 
Um, so very well said. It's interesting to me um, just how in a lot of athletics, because I've ran at a high level before, um, and I actually have been like anorexic before, and how in that kind of culture, how it's so commonplace and how, you know, not a lot of people talk about it. And I think it's very powerful that Mary Kane was able to go out and share her story because, um, you know, this is, this is one guy coaching a lot of professional athletes. And a lot of times when somebody is professional, like people think, oh, they got everything figured out when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to how they're living. And, it, and you know, it, she really was at a point where she was unhealthy to a point where she broke bones because of her training. And a bunch of her teammates were probably under the same umbrella effect, but just haven't spoken up about it. Um, so it's very important to speak up about those, those types of things. And so I'm kind of going on all right here, but one thing that I always recommend to anybody to just as you're growing up, um, you know, she had some bone issues and obviously that was complicated with the things that she was eating, you know, she wasn't getting the vitamins and minerals she needed, but some of the best things that you could take just for your own body, um, for everybody. So anybody listening, uh, whether you're a, a child, you're an adult, like multivitamins are clutch. All right. Multivitamins. Cause if you're eating things and you, maybe you don't get enough vitamins, the multivitamin definitely going to help calcium. Now calcium, you can build your, your bones get to a peak calcified state when you're 28 years old. So that's me right now. I'm at my peak calcified state. I still broke my clavicle. All right. So if you want to get in as much calcium as you can, well, not too much, but take a calcium supplement. All right. Those are the big, two big things that can really help, especially with the calcium one, because uh, for you guys that are younger, um, for everybody watching students, it's like you can really calcify those bones at a younger age. And especially if you're running, stress fractures those things that can happen and that's kind of from overtraining and, and those fractures that she had gotten aren't like you know fractures where you're cr like crashing into something it was more of an overuse injury where she was just kind of running too much and then got these these injuries so sorry i know i said a lot there <laughs> but um, yeah, um also to add on like there's there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with having male coaches right because i went to gymnastics and there were there were male coaches there too but like there has to be a balance as well because you um yeah you get what i mean <laughs> yeah no i completely agree it's like um there definitely needs to be a balance and there's definitely a lot more male coaches right now so it'd be nice to have some more female coaches and just um just different just different perspectives and uh it makes you know, a lot of times it's easier for uh, girls to relate to other women and for guys to relate. You know, you kind of, a lot of times you'll look up to somebody as a role model that's the same gender. So it definitely helps out a lot. Thank you. All right. So I don't see any questions. So uh, wait, let's see if I had anything left. Okay. Yeah, I got one more slide. Boom. All right, so how to help. So, Sophie, do you want to uh, read out how you would help? Okay. There's the, oh, yeah, right. So how to help, tell an adult, encourage and support. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, I think the biggest thing is like, if you see somebody around your age, um, you know, tell, tell an adult about it. Like if you see one of your friends and you're concerned about their eating, like maybe talk to your parents and say, Hey, I noticed this is happening and see what they say. Um, also encourage, you know, encourage them to be able to have the conversation, like encourage them to be like, Try not to judge is what I'm saying. It's like, try not to judge them for their eating habits. Like no, eating habits is sometimes a very personal thing. So if somebody is giving you this information um, of like, oh, this is how I eat, uh, try not to like really 
go at them. Try to just take it at for, at what it is. And if you think it could be, uh, they could need some sort of help, then definitely guide them in that direction of encouragement and support. All right. Also, um, like you know, since we're on here now, um, and we're talking about like eating disorders, right? Um, sometimes. Cause like I eat smaller portions of food now, I don't I don't know why, but it's just. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right. So my dad's always like, "Oh, are you are you on a diet? Like, are you on a diet? Why? Are you, what are you? Are you gonna be on a diet? You're too young to be on a diet. You gotta eat more." And we just like. Mm. That's just how I eat. Like I get full easily now. And... Right. Right. Well, it's, it's good that your dad is looking out for you. And, uh, but it's, yeah, it's one of those things where it's, it's tough, especially as we're growing to know, like how much is the right amount, because, uh, there's definitely a thing is eating too much. And then there's definitely the thing is eating too little. And it's like the amount, especially as a kid, like the amount of food that you need changes literally like every day as you're growing. So because as you guys grow, you're gaining weight. And as you gain weight, then your caloric intake changes. So, you know, what you're eating a year ago is going to be different than what you're eating, you know, next year. So it's a, it's an interesting dynamic um, to go through. But yeah, thanks for sharing that, Sophie. Uh, thanks a lot. So big round of applause for Sophie being on here. All right. It takes a lot of courage to get on here and especially to talk about, you know, some of your eating habits in front of a large audience. So thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, we love the virtual backgrounds. <laughs> you got to teach me how to do that. That's kind of cool. All right, guys. Uh, Sophie, any words for everybody and no pressure? No, I don't think so. All right. All right, guys, well, have a great weekend and feel free to reach out if you have any questions about the uh, nutrition project. All right, guys, have a good one. Cool. All right, so it's ended, even though it says it's still done.